Hi, good evening. What a beautiful day we had. The sun shone, the grass grew, the birds sang. On the way to church this morning, I, I, got, to, I got to see a, a beautiful, shiny yearling bear along the side of the road. Luckily, he was on his side of the game fence and not mine. Not far up the road, I also saw a deer and a few wild turkeys, so they added to God's grace in the day that he provided us today. Today, as we continue on with Archbishop Welby's Thy Kingdom Come readings, we'll begin with a portion of a prayer written by St. Therese of Lisieux. It begins, Come, Holy Spirit, come. Cause your Holy Spirit to be so deeply implanted within our lives that we might know and be instruments of your peace. May today there be peace within. May you trust God that you are exactly where you are meant to be. May you not forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith. May you use those gifts that you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you. May you be content knowing that you are a child of God. Let this presence settle into your bones and allow your soul and freedom to sing, dance, praise, and love. It is there for each and every one of us. That's wonderful, the idea of peace, finding peace in who we are and where we are as children of God. It's a wonderful thing. It's the thing that we pray for each and every day that we converse with our Heavenly Father. This evening's reading uh, provided to us by Archbishop Welby is from... 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. And the scripture begins, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Archbishop Welby writes in his reflection, I find these verses of 1 Peter to be some of the most compelling passages in Scripture. A people once excluded are now embraced, those who were exiled now chosen. The reviled have been made holy, the rejected are loved. Those to whom Peter writes now know what it is like to be marginalized, oppressed, and harassed because of their faith. They are the people without status, except in the eyes of God. They are unknown and unseen and unimportant, except to the creator of the universe. In this verse, we are called, perhaps challenged, to see ourselves not as the world sees us, but as God sees us. We are called to judge ourselves, not according to the values which seem to matter most to the world, status, wealth, and power, but according to God's boundless love in Christ. Because of God's work for us in Christ, we are called worthy, loved, children, and chosen. We are called worthy, loved, and chosen in the eyes of God. This is how we learned to be God's people, His special possession, rather than people beholden to this world. Ours is a status characterized by abundance, hope, faithfulness, and love. 
What Christ has done is give a people who had been told they had no value a sense of eternal value. When we think we are useless, unimportant, a failure, or an embarrassment, the Word of God reminds us who we really are, God's own people. This is a love that transforms us, but for a purpose, for with the gift comes a calling, so that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness and into his wonderful light. We are transformed to the agents of God's transformation. Our eyes are opened so that we can enable others to truly see. This addresses the human tendency to judge others as less which we do, do for all sorts of reasons. In Christ, God has chosen them too. They are included with us as part of his people. We cannot, be ba we cannot put boundaries or walls down between us. Those who we might be tempted to exclude, ignore, or reject are exactly those whom God gathers up and welcomes. Consider your five friends. They are included in on this. Oh, that the Spirit would be so would so move in them that they might come to know it for themselves. The transfer the transformation is incredible. Our marks of shame become signs of God's love. As we pray together today, let us pledge to see everyone we meet through the loving eyes of God. As we have said time and time again, we are all brothers and sisters in creation. God loves each and every one of us. Our connection with Him isn't something that we have control of because He prays in our name as much as we pray to Him in our own name. God is ours and we are His. His children. He is our Father. It's best that we remember this and while we remember that, we should remember that He loves each and every one of us regardless of who we are, where we are, or what we're doing. Have a nice night. Bless you all. May God bless you and keep you. May he comfort you in times of sorrow and walk with you and bring you joy each and every day you partake in his creation. Remember his love for you and stay safe and sound and content within your life. Take care. God bless.